Hi, I'm Hollywood. Come take a look with me behind the mask and explore life. This is Hollywood, over and out. Hi, this is Hollywood and welcome to my web channel, Behind the Mask. I am here with a very special guest, Kevin Weiler of Talent Plan. Hello, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So, where are you from? You, you hail from New York State, don't you? Yes, I was uh, born upstate New York in Albany. And uh, then we moved to New Jersey. So, I'm an East Coast guy. An East Coast guy. And so, how did you get into the entertainment business? You've been in, involved in several aspects of it. You know, I think always as a kid I wanted to. I was one of those kids who always like was putting on the little theater shows in the backyard with the neighborhood kids. And others were playing sports, and I was doing that too, but you know, I really enjoyed the, the theatrics of things, and the costumes, and all that. So that was, that was my first, and then I, uh, as an adolescent, around 16, 17, I did some modeling, some um, catalog modeling and stuff like that, just uh, local, regional stuff. And what other forms of entertainment business have you been in? You've produced, you, I don't know. Well, um, I studied in New York City uh, as an actor in my early 20s with Uta Hagen, um, William Esper, many people, and then um, Shakespeare training, all that kind of stuff. And I also got on uh, as an under five and a reoccurring on um, One Life to Live. Ah. So that got me my equity, my, uh, not my equity, but my after card and my equity card. So I was getting all my union stuff and then I thought, well, it was time to sort of come out to Los Angeles. So that's what I did. Um, so you came out primarily for, to be an actor. Yes, To absolutely. fulfill the Hollywood dream. Yep. And how did that go? What, what? It went all right. You know, extra roles, glorified extra roles, in, independent film roles. Um, nothing that was paying a whole bunch of money. And, um, you know, I was doing theater. I've done some tours. How did you get involved in production? Um, I have always been a good producer, a good manager, a good business. Person. Good with money. <laughs> good with money. You know, I, I've just for many years, I mean, I owned my first home when I was 22 years old. So... I just thought, well, let me try to go into this aspect where I have a little more control of things. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what got me into it. I did about five independent films, two documentaries, a handful of commercial specs. Um, yeah. So, Kevin, tell us about your company. Okay, the company is called Talent Plan, but it used to be called Mulligan Management. It was uh, founded in 1987 by Brian Mulligan, an internationally recognized Charlie Chaplin impersonator. And Mulligan Management grew into the country's leading lookalike talent management company. And it's primarily uh, uh, impersonators, celebrity impersonators. I, it's one of the top uh, companies in Los Angeles. Uh, in, the, in the country, yes. What other services do you offer? Uh, well, I bought the business in 2001 or two, somewhere in the middle. Um, and I sort of opened it. I opened it up to offering more things like all kinds of event planning, um, all kinds of entertainment booking. So we have magicians, comedians, bands, DJs. I hear you can put together an entire uh, panel, uh, like the, uh, the, the show. Uh, American Idol. American Idol. Yeah, we've done some themes. That. We do some theme shows. You know, Idol's been big here and there. And, and back in the day, we had a panel of the three judges, which was the Simon and the, and the Paula. And What's the one of the craziest parties you've ever put together? Uh, I'd say the, the, uh, the craziest parties... Uh, most outrageous. I think the strangest was strangest. when I was booked as Johnny Depp not too long <laughs> ago. And I'm okay with being booked as Johnny Depp, but there's always a fine line when somebody's trying to really pose you as that individual, as that actor, and that's what they did. And I'm not big on that. You know, it's supposed to be entertaining, it's supposed to be for the fun of it. You're, you're booking these talent and they're greeting people on the red carpet. It's a Hollywood experience, they know it's not the real people. This was not that. He set up a whole evening, and everyone in that room thought I was Johnny Depp. And I went with it. I had was that uncomfortable? It was, it was uncomfortable. Um, where they made a mistake is what I always say. If, if it's not the real thing, then get on and get off. Don't give them time to analyze it. And I was there for two and a half hours. So by the end of it, I think most people were pretty skeptical. Talk about nerve-wracking. Yeah. How did you survive that? Well, I just drank. <laughs> yeah, you usually don't. <laughs> no, the job, never, so was, never. That was the exception. Uh, so what? Uh, you just did a red carpet, actually. You what? Tell us about what impersonations you do, because you do several of them, and I, I do know well, one of them, my favorite. Right. And the way I met Brian was um, one of the things I did here when I first came to Hollywood was interactive and events and murder mysteries. 
So we played different characters. At one point we did Gilligan's Island. I was Gilligan. At another point we did something else. And I was uh, so I worked. At, and, and the person who owned that company was a, an internationally known Cher impersonator. So she knew Brian. That's how I got to know him. Um, so I bought the business. I didn't think about doing any more characters. I was really just trying to run this business. But then as time went by, I realized, well, these things I can do and others weren't available. So I do Charlie Chaplin now in his costume. I do Pee Wee Herman. I do um, Boy George. Um, I do Slash. I've done Slash for a music video. Um, you know, there's several that I'll do. I've done um, the, lead, the singer, lead singer of Queen before, and I do Joan Rivers. Yes, Joan, and I love your Joan. You do, I just recently saw you at a, a pri very private party mm -hmm. for the Golden Globe Awards, right. and uh, you were so fantastic. People, I mean, when they were you were leaving, people stood up and paused the awards to clap for you. Yeah. That was great. Tell us about being Joan. Joan is absolutely my most adored character um, because it's Joan Rivers. You know, Charlie Chaplin, don't just say anything, so it's all about physical comedy. And the others, you do what you do. But with Joan, because she's a comedian, I get to be funny, and I get to be interactive, and I get to be improvisational. The red carpet is my favorite with Joan. I do have an hour-long stage show as well. But for me, it's red carpet, because it, it's all about just connecting with people and having some fun with a love and adoration sort of tactic. I don't use cuss words hardly ever. Um, I don't make them feel bad like Joan can tend to do. Um, I really, you know, sure, what are you wearing? Who are you wearing? You look just like this one, blah, 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 blah. Who, what's your name? And you make them just feel com comfortable and confident because you want them to like you. Now, you have uh, worked for Joan. You've performed for Joan. Tell us about that. Well, Joan had a series called Joan Knows Best. It's Joan and Melissa. That was their... Um, their um, reality series on the Wii channel, I think for two or three seasons. And I did the first season. I did episode, I believe it's 13. And she and Melissa were judging a drag show down in West Hollywood. And they wanted um, a Joan Rivers to come and, and, and judge with them. So I got to come and meet Joan and Melissa. It was unfortunate because they weren't speaking at the time. Oh, no. Whether that was just produced or whether it was real, I'm not sure. But they were not speaking to each other for the most part. So it was a little uncomfortable, but I busted... A family in. feud. Oh, totally. <laughs> I busted into the three uh, camera set with my mic in my long gold and green gown and just went right to, to work with them. And they both laughed and I asked how Melissa was and I asked how her daughter Cooper was, son Cooper is. And then they interviewed me. And what did you say when you first walked in? Well, when I first walked in, what was <laughs> happening is there was a line of people out the front and their limo had gone around the back, so they knew she was in the building. They're going crazy. They're stammering to get into the building. So I went out there, and I just, like, as, as, as Joan, trying to keep them calm and let them know that things are going to be fine. And so when I bumped him, busted into the room, I said, Joan, Melissa, Joan, oh my God, we can't keep it down out there. They're going crazy. The crowd's roaring. They need you. And that just got me into the room before anybody else Because <laughs> they were interviewing others as That's well. That's great. That's great. Now, what is, what is it like working with her? What is she like? She was really, you know, Joan Rivers is an older woman. So as great as she looks in the face, she's a frail older woman. And she's just calm, cool, and collected. She's smart as a whip. She's got her bag of tricks that she pulls from for comedy jokes and sting jabs. Um, so she was kind. She came up to me. She said, you look very cute. And I looked back at her. I said, I wasn't going for cute, Rivers. <laughs> she giggled. But you know, and other people interviewed after me and they were so nervous. I said, look, she has pretty much one expression because she's had so much plastic surgery <laughs> that it's just sort of a, hi, I'm feeling fine expression. <laughs> it's never mean looking. It's never over the top happy. So you don't really know how to read her. So she, whatever she says, just go with. And that's what I did. She was kind. And then um, I sat with her and Melissa when they did some judging. And I popped in and out and talked to them here and there. And they were fun. They, they were, were fun. They were very yeah. nice to me. Well, you, you lucked out. <laughs> You know, I don't you know. You got on the good side. I think they're professional and I'm professional yeah. and I knew where my boundaries were. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about her outspokenness, though? She's very outspoken in the media and, and the press about certain issues. And well, that is Joan's shtick. She's a Jewish woman from New York, and so part of it's very real. They're all Jewish women, women from New York. Women are opinionated. Tend to be opinionated <laughs> and, and vocal. 
Um, that was her shtick, coming yeah. up the ladder around tons of male comedians. She had to find a way to be different and to be listened to. And so I think that's how it started for her. Um, I've listened to her comedy back in the day, modern day. She's pretty vulgar, mm -hmm. can be. And I tried that when I, when I put together my first uh, stage show and it just didn't work for me. Yeah. It wasn't who I am. It's not that I don't use cuss words, but it wasn't, didn't feel right to be on that stage and not be her and do it. So I don't, I don't do that too often. Now, what would you do if you weren't in the entertainment business? Well, I do other things outside of the entertainment industry. Um, I also work as a director at a, a medical facility. I'm the director of HIV AIDS services department. And I've been there for almost two decades. When I first came out to California, I started as an actor in their tobacco prevention program. We did theater outreach to 20,000 plus kids in, in the LA Unified School District every year. So you participated in AIDS Walk this year? I did AIDS Walk yes. this year. This is our fourth year doing AIDS Walk uh, with APLA. Uh, we are a part of the CCI, so all of what we raise goes directly to the Valley Community Clinic's um, HIV department. Now, if you were to do solely that as no entertainment, would that... Oh, no. Well, <laughs> He's you know, here's the thing is, <laughs> I have been very creative in my life. <laughs> and those at, at, at Valley Community Clinic love me. I have brought several celebrity impersonators. Your eyes just got glassy at the thought of not, not being uh, entertaining. <laughs> no. It's just not. It wouldn't be possible. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of, we, we bring it to the clinic. I've done Joan Red Carpet for some of their very, <laughs> very large great. entertainment fundraisers. Yeah. We've done other fundraisers with other talent for the clinic. Um, I've done other things for the clinic that weren't lookalikes, but I, I bring it. And, they, and I think I'm pretty much the token entertainer at the clinic. And right. So they look forward to me with bringing ideas for things. Well, as long as you're, you keep doing what you're doing and it makes you happy, that's, that's what matters. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back uh, with more from Kevin Weller. We're going to talk about some future plans and an upcoming project that he's working on. This is Hollywood on Behind the Mask. Come take a journey with me behind the mask as I interview some of the most interesting and diverse people in the world of entertainment, art, music, charities, fashion, and more. This is Hollywood. Welcome back to Behind the Mask. We're here with Kevin Weiler. And uh, Kevin, so tell me about this new project that you're working on. Yes, um, Talent Plan has produced a show called Pop Rocks. It's a pop tribute nightclub extravaganza. Um, basically, we're paying tribute to pop icons such as Michael Jackson, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, Beyonce, Bruno Mars, Britney Spears, and Justin Timberlake, and it's staged in sort of a nightclub setting. And is it dance as well, as impersonators? What, basically what we did is we hired an ensemble of dancers, dancers that we were gonna be able to put into the characters. So I didn't bring on my lookalikes, because they're one, they charge too much money, and two, <laughs> they weren't dancers. What I wanted to create was not just a sit down and watch theater kind of show, but an all-involved nightclub-y sort of feel. So How does that work? Oh my god. Um, basically, when you come into the, sh to the showroom or to the club or whatever, wherever we end up housing it, um, you get your drink, you get your appetizer. There are people doing hula hoop art, people are doing cirque art, um, sexy sort of kinds of things. So basically, there's an ambience that's created as soon as you walk in of a sort of cirque. So, so it's, audience participation ambience. Not not audience participation, but they get to just watch it. So it's okay. just happening around them. them and okay. around, exactly. And is there a stage show? And then the stage show starts, yes. And there's about, I don't know, is there 12 numbers? And wow. it goes from, you know, but say, say Katy Perry opens with her backup dancers. And then Bruno Mars comes out with his backups. And then there's a small break. And all of a sudden, a uh, nine-foot stilt walk juggler comes out to the floor Music goes up, confetti goes off, lights are flaming, and, he's, and he or she's juggling. People are getting a drink, enjoying the juggler. Boom, the show starts again. Uh, Britney Spears into Justin Timberlake. Uh, Lady Gaga, boom, we have another cut. And we've got someone who comes on at a ball or a contortionist or a hula hoop artist. Um, and that's the feel of the evening. 
Now we have a clip on that and it looks pretty exciting and active. I see the audience members up there mm -hmm. dancing and everybody's just having fun. And it's, it's a really very, fun thing. Very wild and fun looking. I mean, the attraction offers the audience members sort of an energy and pizzazz of walking into a music superstars concert or the Grammys. That's the feel. Now, is this something that's just going to be here in LA or are you taking it to Las Vegas as well? Um, we're we're going to probably talk to some of the hotels in Vegas. I think it would be more of a... You know, look, corporate events, when people, when, when they come to Vegas or California or New York, some of the um, destination zones for corporate, they want to do something really big for their four or 500 IBM staff that have traveled internationally. Right. So this is the kind of thing that we would want to offer, uh, that, uh, this kind of theme to walk into. So it's very different. Nobody's done it before. Um, but the goal really was to include it on uh, guided tours as part of a Hollywood experience. That's my goal. Um, for visiting guests here in Los so for Angeles. target it for tourists for tourists for primarily visiting yeah I mean the show will also be available for booking at private or public events both locally or other cities I'd love to come well, so with all good luck we will be somewhere in Hollywood in a location and you'll be invited for the opening yay so what's in store uh, now for you and what what do you what's coming up next for talent well, plan look I've got bookings left and right we've got a Jim Carrey uh, booked in Fullerton. Uh, this evening, actually, wow. we've got um, an '80s theme thing happening in, in uh, San Diego in about a week. '80s parties are big, aren't 80s they? '80s parties, themes, yeah. They're so, just well, so because, much fun. It was such know, a they, fun people era. People want to do themes, and you know, those who are thirty or thirty-five and younger don't understand a '40s theme or even a '50s theme really so much. So the '80s is like ancient for a What's the age old. group that uh, primarily you get requests? For, for parties? Most of the parties, most of my events are corporate. So I would say it's anywhere between 25 and 70. Wow. You know, um, we do have parties for, we get we get called for bar mitzvahs and bar mitzvahs and they want, <laughs> they want like a, um, a classic Hollywood and they'll invite uh, Marilyn and Chaplin. Yeah. Everybody knows Marilyn Monroe. She's our number one booked talent. Um, everyone knows who that is. And, and most people know Charlie Chaplin and I think it's because of Universal Studios, right? Because Chaplin's there and Lucy's oh, yes. there. Because otherwise, they don't know who Laurel and Hardy are. They don't know who um, Abbott and Costello are. They don't know Groucho mm -hmm. Marx. They don't know who W. C. Fields is or um, any of those old, older twenties, thirties, forties. They don't know who they are. Never wow. even heard of them. Wow. That's so that's that's sort of where we are. But we've got missing something out <laughs> coming up in the eighties. We've got uh, me doing Boy George. We've got Tina Turner. We've got Madonna. At that one, uh, we've got a big event happening in San Francisco coming up with, um, I think it's Madonna, Marilyn, um, Elton John. Now, where can people find and connect with Talent Plan and where can people call you to uh, request? Well, you can find us on the web. Our site is talentplan.com or lookalikes.net. Both will bring you to the same site. Um, there's also a poprocks.com. You can look at the Pop Rocks. It's Pop Rocks with a Z. Um, you can look at that site and see all the talent on there. Um, yeah, and where can people it. reach you, Kevin? They can contact me by um, emailing me to kevin at talentplan.com or by calling 310-279-3588. I just wish you all the best. I can't wait to see Pop Rocks and see what the future holds for Talent Plan. So We'll definitely uh, stay in touch and we'll have some more on you. When is Joan coming back to Vegas? That was so much fun. You came oh, to Vegas I that know, one time. I know. I've got to promote Joan more. I've got to get back on some of the, the, the big sites. Like I had so salad. much fun with you at that private party. That was great. I have a blast. I think I escorted about 600 people down a red carpet at that event. Wow. Uh, I remember the one we did at the Avalon in Hollywood. Oh, that was fun. There was 1,300 people that you helped me with. That, that was fun. That was a big event. That was really fun. I love those big events. I'm exhausted at the end of them, so I earned my, 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 my dollar. Oh, we always have a good time afterwards. So. Yep. Well, thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate it. This is Kevin Weiler I've been speaking with from Talent Plan. And this is Hollywood. Thank you for joining me on my show, Behind the Mask. We'll be back next time with more entertainment and interesting people. Thank you. This is Hollywood, over and out.